What's up guys, Gary here with Gen VFX. Welcome to another shorter tutorial. And today we're gonna to be talking about interpolation. If you know what interpolation is, interpolation is the way a value between two points on the animation graph interact with each other. It's that bit in between the keyframes. So for example, I mean, blatantly, if you're looking at the screen right now, which of course you will be because you're watching a tutorial, um, what you can see here is we're in the animation viewport. And if I just, I can pull out a bit on this one, that's just, that's just the um, uh, the camera view. This is more of our user perspective. And you can see I have a box, which is up here. And there's a keyframe at frame one, and there's a keyframe at frame 41. And that's a linear animation. So if I play this back, I'm just going to set the end of this to 50 um, to make it a bit, uh, just so I'll leave it to cycle. So that's a linear interpolation. Now, that is not necessarily standard interpolation. Most standard interpolation is Bezier uh, by default. Um, but I've got this here. Uh, you can see that I've got cube fall here, and it's the location. It's the Z location, because, of course, the Z is the vertical in Blender. So there it starts up here, and the value on that. Well, I can't quite see that here. I'd have to have this window open with an N in there. And we go to the object, and we click on the item there, and we can see there's a 10.67 but we can't see it here. I think that is a failing, but then it doesn't have to be that way. Um, I like to be able to adjust keyframes in here and actually see values, sometimes even just change the value in here. And if we get a view, we can show here, show sliders, and that gives us our keyframes. You can actually see that the color is nice and vibrant on the keyframe. There you go. So if I want to, I can move this keyframe up and down just by using a slider. Very, very useful. Linear interpolation, boom, all the way down there. And also, we can go anywhere and we can add a keyframe in the same way. Really, really nice. It saves you having to have that open in your main viewport. Uh, essentially, that's what it is. Um, so what I'm going to talk about, I say, is the interpolation. So that is a linear interpolation, which everyone's aware of. But there are some really interesting different interpolations that are available to you in Blender. And uh, they are actually very, very useful. Uh, particularly if you're wanting a particular look. For example, if I just go uh, press T here, it gives you the types of interpolation and the types of easing by strength and then some dynamic effects. Now T opens and gives you access to all of these and you can pick which one you want. For example, constant. Constant basically just goes, I'm there and then I'm there. So it's it's useful for think of like turning things on and off um, or like if you want to... Um, just makes me pop across to another position out of the way. So he goes, yeah, it's going to be there, and then boom, it's there. But obviously, interpolation, normally you like to have these things um, linearly or so on. So let's press T, and let's press that button there. We can also go, if I press T and go C, that gives you a constant. It starts with a C. If I go T and L, it gives you the linear. And if I go T and then B, that gives you a Bezier, and it kind of clamps them. you know. So that's what you get with the Bezier, which is nice. The other stuff, this is the stuff where it gets really interesting. Sometimes you want something to feel as though it's speeding up, and that's all you want it to be slowing down. So you can say, I want this to go fast into this next section. So if I pick this key here, and I press T, and I now go press here, this is sinusoidal, which basically is an increasing value down. It starts off going a little bit slower and then goes down. If I very quickly select this again, and I'll do this over here so you can see the change happen. If I press T and go to quadratic, you'll notice the arc gets a bit further and then a cubic, it's even tighter along. So it's slow at the very beginning and then quite hard at the end. So it's like bam, bam. You can see this getting faster as it goes on, which is superb. If I press T in here again and I pick on Quartic, you can see there it's even faster in towards the end, so it's like dum. And we can also go to Quintic, which again is even faster and very, very hard when it hits. And then Exponential, which is even harder again. Each one of them just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. And then Circular, which is a little bit more eased, but it does feel a bit sort of like thum, so then at the end. You can also nicely, you can also go uh, T1, which gives you constant, uh, T2, 
gives you linear. T3, which gives you the Bezier. T4, which gives you the sinusoidal. T5, T6, T7, T8, and T9. And then I think T0, yes, gives you the circular. So you can cycle through them in essence until you get the one that you want by pressing the shortcuts. T, boom, that's nice. But what is really lovely, this is really lovely, is if you go T and you click on back, that will basically go past your point and come back to where it's, where you want it to. That's boom. This is like a bounce, but it's not a bounce. It's in fact a, an overshoot, which is quite nice. Uh, obviously, you're locked into the way the timings work on this, but it is really nice. If I go T and then go bounce, this will end up at your endpoint, but it will also bounce into it. So it will hit it first and then bounce, bounce, and tuck in. So it's like dum, dum, dum. There you go. Dum, dum, dum. And then after that, there's elastic. Now, is it T? Yes, T, T, sorry. That's it. That gives me the elastic. So it's like. It's like a spring and it hits and that's it. Poof, it's there, but there's a little elastic sort of like effect. So I can move this wherever I end this. You can see that the curve extending out and you can see it's quite, it's quite a good little effect. Because it is so sudden that it goes into it. What we can also do, if I just go, let's do a T7 onto that one there. I'm not going to put another key here by pressing I on the selected channel. And on this one, I'm going to do T and I'm going to go elastic. So what happens is, is it will go tum, and you'll, you, if you notice that there's a small little, little cracker of a bounce at the end. Let's just move this along there. Tum. Yeah. So it's tum. Tum. So that's really quite useful. And I mean, I'm only just using that on a single object. Um, but that's actually a really, 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 really nice way of being able to control where your bounce hits. So we can take two of those points there. We can go uh, G, Y, lift that up. And then you have this kind of... Ooh, it's, it's just really, really cool. I love that. Uh, the elastic and the bounce. So if I just press T again, you can see them also. It's the back bounce and the elastic. They're, they're dynamic effects. They're just they're fa it's fakery, but it's actually quite useful because it, you don't just have to use it on a box. You can use this on a rig. So what do I mean by doing this to a rig? Well, hopefully you can see right here, right now we have an arm, and uh, we're looking at it. This is through the uh, camera obviously I just, just realize I've turned everything off there you go you can sort of like see there's the camera and there's our little arm and if I go in from this object into pose mode and let's just go here you can see I've got some bones in this as well okay so what I'm going to do to explain what I mean by how we can do this we can add some sort of like flopping motion to this arm okay as if it's just like a, it's just dropped off somebody and just gone blah blah blah, blah. like it's sort of like blubbery kind of thing over there so I'm going to go into bone one uh, but sorry, bone, bone one and bone two, which essentially is our shoulder, our uh, lower arm and our wrist. And I'm going to go to about frame, let's go to about frame 30. Okay. And I'm going to, that should be zero. Let's just get these to zero. So they're flat. There we go. I want to so dump, dump, dump. And I'm going to go into here. Insert a single keyframe in that one, and then insert a single keyframe in that one, and then insert a single keyframe in that one. So I now have keyframes on all of those, and you can see here in the graph editor that there are, is stuff that's uh, actually, if I select them there, uh, we have those. If I press the dot, there you go, there's all a keyframe of about zero uh, or as near as damn it. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make another keyframe and I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to take this one, I'm going to rotate this one up. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to rotate this one up. And I'm going to take this one. And let's go to bone two. I'm going to rotate this one. Whoops, no. I'm going to rotate this one up. And we've got the auto keying on here, so you can go, whoa. So I've now got this. So on all of these bones, if I've got bone one, let's get rid of that one. 
bone two, that's fine. So now I can go bone one, all those, and I can see all of these keyframes here, and if I select them all, we can go uh, decimal point on the number pad, and uh, decimal point, whatever, the point thing on the number pad, and just dump. Now that's all fine and dandy. Uh, that's how, uh, I, I'm fine with that, although I don't want that value there. Being that, I want that to be zero, and that one to be zero as well. So if I, I want them to flop. So I can pick those front keys, and I can go T, and then I can go bones. And what happens is now, from the beginning of the first keyframe to the last keyframe, it will be the resolution point of the bounce. So it's like pop, 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 pop. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 which is nice. It's really nice and simple. But be nice to have a little, be a little bit of flop to it. And by that, what we'll just do is we're just going to actually push the keyframes from the uh, the elbow and the wrist. We're going to push them back a little bit. So if I'm going to change this back to uh, by pressing Control Insert back to uh, this lovely view here, which is the dope sheet. I'm going to go pop, bring that forward, and I'm going to take bone one and bring that forward. And bone two, which is the rest, I'm going to bring that forward again. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to bring that forward another couple of frames, actually, I think, just to give it a little bit more sort of like. Uh, I mean, see, so when I play it now, it just goes thump, thump. Can you see? It's like a flop, flop. Let's look at it. Uh, flop, flop. Sounds awful. Um, let's pop that there, uh, pop that onto there. There you go. It's just got some sort of weird color on it. And so it goes, dum, dum. there you go, just like that. Dum, dum. Dum, dum. Now, the great thing about this is that you can carry on and keep doing stuff. For example, we could make it so there's a floor there and it actually gets thrown into view, like it's the arm that's been torn off of some zombie, awful clone plastic thing. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just thinking as you do. So if I press play on this one, you can see where I've gone and said, right, okay, so I've thrown it across the room. So it's sliding to a halt. And the actual halting is done with um, uh, Quintic. So is it? Hit, so that's, so that's sliding to a stop. And the rest of it is all sort of like that little bit. I mean, I have actually done a little bit of extra finger animation just on the fingers, so they're a bit more curled in, and then they flatten off, and then they end up settling a bit more. And they're also going slightly to the floor, so I'll have to adjust that. But there you go, that's kind of what I'm talking about. The actual keyframes themselves on the bones. Uh, you know, if you look at these, if I go, go back to, there we go. Um, I think it's Z, there you go. So if I go on the Z one, just press that, you can see we've only got two keyframes, and it is the do, 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 do. And um, that's uh, a little bit of animation. But as I said, if you want to, you can bake your keyframes yourself. So there you go. That's the kind of thing you can do with interpolation. It's quick, it's easy, and it allows you to do things that potentially take you longer, but gives you a bit more control. Okay, guys, I hope that's been of some use to you. Uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>